Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of The Lair of the Phoenix. I am James Phoenix. Today, we have a very special review um, to go along with a couple other videos we're doing later in the month. We're having ourselves a little bit of a, sort of a mini Scooby Doo month, if you will. And uh, we're going to open it up with a very special uh, little. I believe, I believe this was a direct to DVD adventure, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, original movie entitled Scooby Doo Adventures The Mystery Map. And what's unique about this is that, to my knowledge anyway, this is the first ever uh, Scooby Doo puppet presentation done entirely with puppets. So that's kind of fun. Joining it's me to discuss this handy little puppet show. Uh, from the mall hall, it was his suggestion to do this. Chris the mall. And hello. Over there from the uh, Shadow's Maw is Mark of Shadow. Hello. And I believe it's this is the only puppet one ever made. And I believe Mole said it was a one-off thing, so they're probably not going to make another one. Mm -hmm. No, anything's possible. Especially considering how much money they had to spend on puppets. Um, and also joining us from the uh, self-titled review channel that she likes to run, Anastasia Laser Beam. Hello. Hello. So, Scooby Doo Adventures: The Mystery Map is uh, effectively a full-on puppet show going through the Scooby Doo mystery. Uh, the puppets being in the style of the pup named Scooby Doo version of the characters. And effectively, uh, Scooby and Shaggy find a treasure map in their triple extra large pizza with uh, peanut butter, potato chips, pickles, and Scooby snacks. And uh, proceed to follow the treasure uh, map in an attempt to find the lost treasure of one Gnarly Beard the Pirate. They run into a, uh, a uh, pirate parrot monster and the ghost of Gnarly Beard himself along the adventure and uh, have a little bit of fun. It's good stuff. I don't really have a format plan for this review, but um, I'll just go around. What do you guys think about the uh, the movie and the plot and whatnot? The, the characters are it's pretty straightforward. It's the typical voice characters that you see in most of the current animated productions. Uh, Shaggy is voiced by Matthew Lillard. Uh, Frank Walker, of course, uh, voices Scooby Doo and Fred. Um, we have Great Delisle. Uh, Great Delisle Griffin. I apologize, I got married. Great Delisle Griffin voicing Daphne. And uh, Stephanie DeBruzio, I believe, is the voice of Velma. Uh, along with the uh, wonderful appearance of one John Reese Davies as the voice of Gnarly Beard the Pirate. Yeah, who I didn't know that was John Reese Davies until I saw the credits. I was like, wait, what? Also, I believe Stephanie was not the original or actual voice of Velma. But she was for this one because she was also the puppeteer for Velma. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I will know none, none of these people are the original voice actors except for Frank Welker, obviously. Yeah, but they're the actual voices currently. And I think uh, – was Grey Delisle not the original, Daphne? I could be wrong. Uh, no, she was not. <laughs> okay, but they're the actual voices now is all I'm saying. Yes. And I don't recall seeing Stephanie's name attached to Scooby-Doo to, to any Scooby-Doo thing except for this one. No, no, I, 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 think, I think she was due for this particular production. She did a great job, though. I have to give her credit. Yes. She sounded perfect, and she did the, the puppeteering spot on for Velma. Yeah, she did a very good job. Yeah, personally, I, I like these. I liked how they sort of did it as two episodes of a TV show. Like it literally splits down the middle, and it even has, I think it even has credits midway through, or at least a title card thing where it's going to swap, and then the next one follows on directly from it. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. I didn't even I kind of I kind of like that. I didn't even notice a break in between it at all. Well, they unmasked Stu, and then they were home watching TV. That was kind of the break. Yeah, but in the on the DVD of it, and also on the digital one, I also got to refresh myself before we went to watch this. At that exact bit, whenever once they caught him and they go home and stuff, there's then a break in between, like, I don't know what you call it, like the eye catch cards, like when Dragon Ball Z used to do it with like, characters or something. It's like them dancing, and then suddenly it cuts to the other part, and then it's a new event, it's a new arc that just follows on, and I like that. Yeah, it'd be kind of hard not to notice the break, Stace. Cause I didn't notice put... any um any particular break in between, like 
like that told me it was a new episode. I just thought it was like okay, and then the next day, and then like that's what I kind of thought. I mean, yeah, like, they did continue right on, but you could tell that where there's I wouldn't say a break, more of a lull. Yeah, no, like, there was I, a break because it was like more point out. There's music, and there was just random like eye catch cards and stuff until they set up this like the second act. It was like it was like uh, an act break if you if you do it in terms of a play. It was like end of act one, and then. Now there's an intermission, and now we're back for Act 2 kind of thing. So, yeah, I didn't even like notice I'm, that, like, but okay. Like imagine, like, imagine if this was on Cartoon Network, where you got them dancing with the eye catch cards. That'll be the advert break, and then it'll come back, and it'll be the next one. That's what I felt it was more like, you know? Like, except which, no which, which splits it in half, because the first one's all about catching him, then the next one's right. another one all about catching his sister, which I like that, because some Scooby-Doo movies have been two before now and stuff like that, and I, I like that. Like, I loved the Batman Scooby-Doo one, which I have on DVD. More on that later this year. But, or maybe later this month, I should say, but where it's two Batman two Batman movies on in one. But I just like the idea of two episodes in one instead of just one big film. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the first one, when they, they caught him and stuff, and then it went to the eye catch, I was like, wait, is that the end? That can't be the end. It's way too early. And then it's like, no, we're back for Act 2. I'm like, oh, they split it up like a stage production. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yep, which I love the little parodies as well within, like, a little bit of satire of Scooby-Doo itself. Like, for example, every time they catch the two, whenever they caught the two villains, it was, I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling kids. And then they point out, but you're a kid. And you're meddling. Yeah. Twitch, Twitch are like, true. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, that's brilliant. I was like, that's yeah. brilliant. Mm -hmm. I can agree with that. Indeed, indeed. I also like the fun they had with it. Like, I know Stacy felt the same way. Like, Scooby-Doo eating a Scooby snack and turning into a giant ball to break down the wall or turning into a yeah. rocket to get off the pirate ship. It's like, that's awesomely fun. I don't know why. It's just it's one of those things. You, I feel this one more so than some of the other Scooby Doo films. You can watch with anyone of any age. Because mm -hmm. I've watched it with like my little nephew and stuff like that. And I've watched it on my own and stuff like that. Because I got it him for his Christmas and stuff like that. And every age group I know they've seen this. There's at least some element in there for them to like. Whereas like the new Scooby Doo films. They've walked away from some of the new ones on DVD, being like, I wasn't, I didn't really like that. You know what I mean? Like there was nothing to really grab them. But yeah, mm -hmm. adults may watch that one and really like that one. And then there will be other Scooby Doo films where adults may hate it, but kids may walk away really, really loving it. This one seems to have bits for everyone, which I, I appreciate that because Scooby Doo spans generations. This seems like the perfect place for all the generations to overlap. I agree with that. It has something a little bit something for everybody here. Yeah, I was I always felt the pup name Scooby Doo was very good at that, and then this this kind of took that a little a, a little bit further. I love the pup name Scooby Doo. That was a great show. I also loved Fred, where he kept having to make his suggestions right after someone's made them. Yeah. It's like that. I love that. <laughs> He's like, yeah, just like I thought with the plane. It's like, yes, way to go, Fred. <laughs> Oh, I loved how sarcastic Velma was in this. I thought that was awesome. That was good. That was good. Yeah. Very observant, Fred Ward. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I, was, I was very upset that at no point did he accuse it of being red herring. Mm-hmm. I don't think they established that red herring exists in this universe because they didn't have a puppet for him. I know. I'm just saying. It's effectively a puppet named Scooby-Doo from everything that was established. Yeah. Basically for that. the most part. I also kind of liked how they did the chase scene. I thought that was clever. Yeah. I really appreciated that. See, I, I, I would make the case for this one. Uh, like I, like I mentioned before, we went to record. I don't think it's entirely a pup named Scooby Doo. I think they look like a pup named Scooby Doo. And it has elements, but when they brought in elements from the other Scooby Doo's, elements from like the other movies, elements from other thingies, what do you call it, like other cartoon series, and just blended them all together. I agree with that. Okay. Fair enough. I I will say they did a lot of things right with this one. They, in my opinion, did 
something's kind of wrong, just or maybe not necessarily wrong, but just things I didn't like. But um, you know, like I said, I like the characters. That the, they got the voice actors, which was awesome and impressive. You know, they, the characters looked right. The the puppeteering was brilliant. The music was decent. Um, it was serviceable for Scooby Doo. I'll, I'll give them that. I, I wasn't too fussed on like the song they used for the chase. It didn't quite feel like a Scooby Doo chase song, but it worked. Um, I was a little disappointed they didn't use anything close to the actual Scooby Doo theme song. It was that was a little disappointing, especially if it's supposed to be for the Scooby Doo anniversary. I thought they would have worked it in there somewhere, and I was just a little disappointed they didn't work it in there anywhere. Like even as like you know maybe like a ringtone for Vilma's phone or something would have been kind of cool. Um, but that that one's just a little nitpick. Um, you know the story was actually pretty decent in terms of you know they they get this treasure map and they have to go find the treasure and mystery ensues. Okay, fair enough. That's a pretty straightforward story. Not one that's really been done in Scooby Doo. So cool, you know. Um, the, the villains in terms of who they are, kind of clever. The, the problem I had with this is to me the pacing was a little bit off. You know, I I don't know if I like the fact that they broke it up because I think that kind of hurt the pacing of it because I felt it was a little too fast and things got wrapped up a little too quickly for my tastes. And personally, I felt some things should have been explained a little bit more because, yes, I know Scooby-Doo is supposed to be about the absurdity and whatnot, but despite the absurdity, there's always been explanation behind the absurdity. There's been some sort of logic behind it in every iteration of Scooby-Doo that I've seen. And I know there's probably movies out there you know, and things of Scooby Doo that I've that I haven't seen that go a little more into the absurdity, more into the it's not going to be explained category. But just based on my experiences, it, this felt like they didn't explain enough, and they just threw stuff in there for the sake of plot convenience. Which I'm like, uh, I don't like that. I don't think they needed to really explain a lot of stuff here, and they just kind of had fun with it, and you just kind of went with it. Because if you really wanted to tear apart every part of Scooby Doo, then you're not really, you're kind of missing the point. So, like, I don't know. And but I'm not tearing, but I don't want to tear apart every part of Scooby Doo. I just want it to make some semblance of sense. Because, like I said, every, at least for me, every episode of Scooby Doo I've ever watched, and all the movies that I've seen, which I'll admit I haven't seen them all, at the end of it, I'm like. Okay, that actually kind of made sense, and it's uh, to me, Scooby Doo's always been about the cleverness of the plot of the villain and of the mystery. And a part of it might be because I'm a huge mystery buff. I love like mystery books and and mystery TV shows and stuff. So I'm always looking into, you know, what's the motivation of the villain and how, you know, how does it tie up in the end? What, you know, how did things happen? And for me, Scooby Doo's always done that for me of. Yeah, you know, this, these are the things that villain is used. This is why the villain did it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but there's always and been just, some things just fell out of place. Yeah, but there's always been gaps in logic in Scooby Doo. Example: How does Shaggy, a sandwich larger than him, yet never gain weight? Yes, and I understand that. I'm not saying everything needs to be explained, but I just felt that with this one compared to all the other ones I've seen, there was so much that wasn't explained, so much that made no sense and shouldn't have happened that I'm just like, it It kind of lowered the experience for me. It hurt the experience for me. So, Whereas uh, in, in other uh, other things, I've seen more has been explained. And I'm not saying you have to explain everything. I'm not saying there should be no gaps in logic because, yes, like you said, Shaggy being able to eat anything and still be real thin. You know, and a pup named Scooby-Doo with Scooby-Doo eating Scooby snacks and turning into different things. Yeah, fair was, enough. You know, those are gaps of logic. Okay, fair enough. But when it comes to the mystery itself, I feel, and maybe it's just me, but I feel with the mystery itself, there shouldn't be as many gaps in logic. And I didn't, and I don't feel that there is in terms of the mysteries of Scooby-Doo. That the mystery itself has always been explained. There might be some small gaps in logic or some small things that kind of don't make sense, but for the most part in Scooby-Doo, they actually explain the mystery and the villain and the motivations of the villain, and I felt they failed to do that with this one. That They, they got the heart of Scooby-Doo right, but they failed on the mystery aspect of it, of, of see, the case and of the particulars of the case. See, I feel that may be a little bit of nostalgia goggles, only because I've seen every iteration of Scooby-Doo from the originals all the way up to the new stuff, it's just come on, Mystery Inc. and all that. Old in film, I've seen like ne like nearly every single one of the animated films. I've seen all the live action films. 
I've seen every iteration of Scooby Doo. And even on the old original series, there was massive things that they left off on how they could do this. There really was, because you'd be like, wow, that was a really a roundabout way to fucking do it. Or yeah, like, like like the original ones, they had the Yeti that was how that was hiding that was hiding out in the ski resort. And the guy in the guy in question was a fat guy. He never liked skiing, he's never liked skiing, he's never wanted to learn skiing. And yeah, he was a monster that constantly skied. Yeah. And yet they never explain how he suddenly became to, to ski. And they do that all the time in Scooby Doo. They are loads of really loads do. going back from the original way up to now where they leave out massive gaps in logic, but you follow it because it's Scooby Doo and it's it's not gonna be like BBC Sherlock in terms of the the awesomeness explanation. It's no. Scooby Doo. There's there's gonna be massive gaps left off because it's more cartoon and kids won't care about all that stuff as much. Which is fair enough. I don't know. I, I guess I just felt that they left off too much with this one. Like I said, I understand they, they leave things out or they don't explain some things. And you expect that with Scooby-Doo, but I don't know. I guess for this one, it just didn't feel like Scooby-Doo to me because they left out too much. They didn't explain enough for me. I was sitting there thinking, uh, okay, most of what just happened made absolutely no sense in terms of like the villain motivation. Because at least, dis despite the fact that maybe certain things villains couldn't do or whatever, in my opinion, every villain had a proper motivation and a reason why they were doing what they were doing and why they had to involve Scooby-Doo's gang or why they had to you know, scare them off or whatever. I just felt with this one, at least in terms of the sister, she had zero motivation. And I'm like you don't explain anything about why she's doing what she's doing aside from she's the, the the kid's sister and she's looking for the treasure. Fair enough. So why go after the Scooby gang? There's no point. At least I didn't see a point to it because they didn't see, properly I, explain anything. I saw the point in that the Scooby gang was now involved. They caught her brother, so she's probably going to want a little bit of revenge for him. And also... <coughs> the elements of she was trying to get the treasure, they had the map and all this other stuff. It was like she just didn't want them to catch her. So I kind of understand it from the typical Scooby-Doo standpoint. Yeah, it, was, it was less about her getting involved with them and more about them getting involved with her. Because they're the ones that followed, followed the map, found the red glowing X and got shot in the pirate ship and everything else. They're the ones that found her. So they got themselves involved with her. She was just trying to find the treasure. So once they got themselves involved with no. her and had that map back, they had, she had to chase after him. No, because she laid the trap for them. She involved herself with them. If she hadn't even laid that trap, because obviously the treasure wasn't there, so obviously either, as Mo pointed out, either the map was fake or they just failed to – or she was just being really stupid. It's like, okay, if the map only leads to some 21st century device that shouldn't have existed in Arlie Bird's time anyway, but hey, it's Scooby-Doo. We can get past that. You know, If it only leads to that, and you already have a ship, you know what's on the island, why the fuck bring attention to yourself? Why lay this elaborate trap to bring attention to yourself? You're just asking to get caught at that point. And especially if you know the reputation of this group, don't put yourself in their crosshairs. Don't draw undue attention to yourself. You have the real map. You know where the treasure is. Just go fucking get it and leave, and they'll be never the wiser. Because obviously they don't know where the actual treasure is, and obviously the map they have doesn't lead to the treasure. It's like, what's the point in making yourself known. There, there's no point. There's no reason for that. They're not harming you in any way. They're probably not going to catch you because they don't know the existence of this supposed other map. So it's like, okay, they might figure out the map is a fake, or they may figure out that, okay, the map doesn't actually lead to the treasure. Fair enough. Where do they go from there? They have nothing else to go on at that point. By the time they figure everything out, which they probably will because Scooby-Doo, and that's fair enough because they're that smart, they'll eventually figure everything out. But by that point in time, you'll have the treasure and you'll have gone. I just don't see the point – I just don't see why she would involve herself with them. There was literally no point for her to do that at all in the context of this story and of how they laid it out. Because and that's what I mean by they didn't explain anything. It was her brother, and she um she already wanted to, like, you know, she probably wasn't going to share the treasure with him anyway, so that's one less person she got to share it with. And she got pissed off that the Scooby, um, Scooby gang involved themselves with the brother, and now she's like, got to keep them off my tail because once you're on the family – like, it's only a matter of time until they figure out, like, everything about him and eventually her. Mm, not really. You're giving the Scooby gang way too much credit for that. Plus, okay, okay. She didn't, want to, she didn't want her brother to get it? Fine. He's in fucking jail. He's not going to get it. Uh, now tell me again why she needs to get involved. 
instead why of just would, take the treasure and leave? Why would he be in jail? He's like a kid. Yeah, he's a kid. <laughs> He's a kid. We don't know if this. He's had a job and stuff like that. I'm sorry to assume he's a first-time offender. He'd be out. He'd be out in a short amount of time. But there's also the element of she was working with that archaeologist woman. So I also get the sense that she wanted to find the treasure, not to keep it all for herself, but also to prove something to her. Mm-hmm. And now the Scooby Gang were proving that they were better than her to her. So it's like, well, if the Scooby Gang are proving they're better to the archaeologist than her, she's feeling passed up and stuff, so it, it sort of gives her that edge to just try and get rid of them, so she looks like number one to the archaeologist. Which makes no sense if they have a false map and she knows where the real treasure is. Just by virtue of her finding the treasure itself, would that not make her better in the archaeologist's eyes? How did you find the treasure? An event, and that would that in itself would inherently the fact she found it and they couldn't means she must have known exactly where that was because you do not get that lucky, right? Which means that would in reveal which case, to that would reveal to everyone all the stuff she'd set up. True. So she wanted to scare them away so people would think the map was still real, so that all the work she does, people think, oh, you actually solved it yourself. You're a great, great archaeologist. And if that's the case, they should have they should have explained that at the end because at the end of every Scooby Doo that I've ever seen, that's one of the things Velma explains. She's all like, "Okay, this is who it is. This is why. This is how they did it. This is why they did it." Yeah, some of the things they get aren't explaining some of the materials or whatever, but that exactly what you just explained is exactly what Velma explains at the end of every ep- episode and movie of Scooby Doo. Of this is why she had to do this, or this is why he had to do this. This is why they had to work together. Oh, okay, fair enough. That makes sense. It may not be 100% explained, but at least she throws an explanation out there. This one had no explanation of villain motivation. The only thing Velma ever explains is, how did you know it was me? It's like, okay, yes, that's interesting. Now, tell us why she did it, because I want to know why she did it. The why is almost as, is as important, if not more important, than who. You can't have a mystery and not have a motivation. That's basic mystery, and that because every scooby cool movie movie. has a motivation. Because they wanted a cool movie and a villain and characters in it and to make it awesome and funny. No. Yep. I, uh, yeah, no, it just it didn't feel like it because they didn't explain anything. They didn't explain at least the motivation of why she had to involve herself, why she did this. Okay, fair enough. You know, and like I said, every Scooby Doo does that, and this is the only one I've seen so far that's failed to explain anything. They failed on the mystery part. They failed on the ending of the Scooby-Doo because Velma explained almost nothing. Yeah, this one is more comedy and fun than the other Scooby-Doo's. Thus, that element gets played up like mad. But it's like, for example, I mean, it's like, for example, who here likes Batman Begins? Me. I do. Anyone? Oh, really? You like that one? The one with the world's greatest detective who doesn't detect anything? Because a different motivation for the character of a different universe and how it's structured with what elements they were playing up. They were playing up more the fun and the comedy for this one than they were the mystery, which totally works. And they did explain some, some stuff. Like I said, like the archaeologist and stuff. The reason I got that sense was because she pretty much says that exact thing herself to the archaeologist who stood right next to him. She said what to the archaeologist? She's basically explaining that she wanted to do this to try and prove herself to her. And the archaeologist was like, yeah, well, I was just on a date with this guy. Uh, and it's the lighthouse guy who seemed creepy the whole movie. So yeah. honestly, I thought he was going to be revealed to be the parrot. Then the second he was innocent, I was like, okay, he's not the parrot. <laughs> he's not going to be the second yeah. villain. I'm not going to fall for this again. See, because the only motivation I got from her is when they outright asked her, like, like who? Well, not Alice here, but she when she mentioned that the the first guy was her brother. I was like, oh, and she mentioned, yeah, I'm, I'm her, I'm her sister, I'm his sister, and we're the descendants of Gnarly Bear the Pirate, so the treasure actually belongs to us. So that's why I'm trying to find it. I'm like, okay, fair enough. That's why you're trying to find the treasure. That doesn't explain why you got yourself involved. And that's one of the things that Scooby Doo always explains. Like I said, they don't explain anything, but the base things they always explain are. Basically figuring out who, you know, how you figured out who it was, although I kind of like the fact that Velma figures it out and doesn't 100% explain it. 
Where in this one, she 100% explained how she figured out who it was, which I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. But Scooby-Doo always explains at least a little bit of the motivations of the villain, a little bit of why you're doing what you're doing and why you had to get us out of the way. Because that's all. That's a question they always bring up in every, almost every Scooby-Doo. And I, it's usually Fred who brings it up, I think. Either Fred or Shaggy always says, you know, okay, that's well and good of why they're doing this and why they need to get this or that item. Why the hell did they try to take us out of the picture? And Velma turns around and says, well, because of this. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Okay. And I always love that about Scooby-Doo, that it makes you think. It doesn't make you think too hard, but it makes you think when they explain at the end. You're like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, which, like I said, I think it was more, like I said, like alternate universe and how they set up this thing and all like like i mentioned like batman begins the dark knight the dark knight rises played up more the fighting the stealth and all that aspects of batman like, completely downplayed the detective part of the world's greatest detective this one is like the same type of thing if they downplayed the mystery aspect to up the fun and the friendship and the just craziness and comedy which Worked. It does work. That sometimes works in iterations. I'd also say, like I said I before, in the other one, um, when uh, each world says its own kind of universe and what it does and what the characters allow and everything. Well, this one has its own little, like you know, logic um bubble here, where everyone else is in their own like world of like all the iterations of Scooby Doo, and that's what this one was. Yeah, yeah but they, well, I think they failed in that because. They, because with the pup named Scooby Doo, that's what they did. They they heightened the it's the comedy and stuff, Scooby-Doo. and it and it works because that show is is immensely funny. But yep. they still have the basic formula of Scooby Doo. They downplay it a little bit and focus more on the comedy, which is how you should do it. But with this one, I I got the sense they tried maybe tried to do too much or be too much because you say they downplayed the the detecting and stuff, and I have to disagree with you on that because. The way that Velma, when she explains how she found figures out who the f- figured out who the person was, that's like Sherlock Holmes level of deducing who the person is. That's it, it, Sherlock Holmes it, level of reading a person. I'm like, it, and you're telling me they took away the detecting? I don't think so. It would be, except for like when she defi- when she finds out that Stuart or Stuart, whatever he was called, was the mm-hmm. guy that did the first one. The third object was something we never saw him use. She goes, oh yeah, that was his as well. How did you know this was his? It was never said that was his. They True. just downplayed that and the motivations and stuff to get up the comedy. And the pup named Scooby-Doo defense doesn't really work because that still tried to be Scooby-Doo as kids. And yeah, this the, the comedy. The this, this this isn't called a pup named Scooby-Doo, the Adventure of the Mystery Map. It's just called Scooby-Doo. It's trying to be its own thing. And also, I think this took, right. like you said, the multiple and iterations of multiple Scooby-Doo. So it's not just a pup named Scooby-Doo, even though all the uh, puppets are a pup named Scooby-Doo. It's like not, multiple universes. I'm not saying this is trying to be a pup named Scooby-Doo. I was using that as as a um, as an example of of taking Scooby-Doo and playing up the comedy and downplaying the detecting a little bit and doing it right because that one I felt was far more comedic than. Than the more adult Scooby Doo's, especially the more recent ones, the more modern ones. They're, they're. I mean, all the Scooby Doo's are funny. Don't get me wrong. It's Scooby Doo. It's got to be funny. But Pup Name Scooby Doo. You know, like I said, it was more kids. It was more for kids and stuff. And so therefore, they played up the comedic aspects. You know, with the whole red herring stuff and just, you know, Scooby Doo turning into various objects while when he's eating Scooby snacks, stuff like that. Fred being a total idiot. You know, that's fair enough. You know, playing him up as the the stupid jock. Fair enough. And they did that beautifully. And they still had, like I said, the, the basic structure of Scooby-Doo, and they chose which elements of that basic structure to play up. That's how you do varied adaptations of, of a basic structure. And this one, I felt they got the basic structure wrong, and to me, that kind of ruined the experience for me when, it, when they didn't even have a basic understanding of what it is they were trying to do. At least think, that's the feeling I got. I think they did because they kind of set their own rules from the very beginning. <coughs> yeah, which just... Yeah, it's like it's it's fair enough. I, like I said, I got the sense that they were just doing their own universe and they were just playing up other aspects and downplaying the other one. Because the pup named Scooby Doo didn't really downplay the mystery. They still had the mystery. They just upped the comedy, which this one just downplayed that one and favored the comedy and stuff because it was fun. Because it's like puppets, and it's like okay, that's kind of funny. 
if this was meant to be more like a comedy and stuff with, with like less of the actual mystery just the mystery is sort of like a plot convenient thing just to move it right. forward and which get to the other fun. comedies which is fine, and I'm not complaining Wait. about the fact that they didn't do much in terms of solving the mystery. That's fair enough. You play it more of the comedy. No, they don't I, solve the mystery as much. Fair enough. You still have to explain it at the end. I'm sorry, but for me, you have to explain it at the end. You don't have to explain the whole thing, but you have to at least stay true to the basic premise of what you're trying to do. And part of the basic structure is you at least explain a couple parts at the end, just a little bit. Let's throw something out there. The fact that they threw nothing out there and took away a huge part of what the basic structure of Scooby-Doo is, just yeah, made it feel not that. like Scooby-Doo to me. Yeah, which I was saying, I was saying that, to, like I said, to me, it worked because they played up the other aspects of Scooby-Doo that haven't really been played up to this degree before. With Because whenever they played them up on other stuff, like put named Scooby-Doo, they always kept the mystery. This one just focused on the other aspects, which that's always fun to do. It's like that's the reason Elseworld comics sell, or that's the reason Ninja Turtles has had various adaptations and stuff over the years, is because some people, like for example, I may not have liked the 80s Turtles, however, some people like that. It completely downgraded Shredder to being almost a joke, and stopped them really being ninjas. True. But some people like that. And it's like, which, like I said, while I don't like it, I can understand some people may like it. And I'm like, this is an alternate universe. I can get behind it. I, I had fun with it. And I, I liked it. And like I said, to me, it worked fine. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, it's not like they're changing the characters at all or who they are or how they operate. or They, they really didn't change anything about Scooby-Doo except they failed to explain stuff. And that just irked me. The fact that they kept everything as it is. They made it Scooby-Doo. They played up the comedy, which is fair enough. They downplayed the actual mystery solving, which is fair enough. I can get behind that. But just the fact that I opted not to explain anything. I'm just like, no, that's part of what Scooby-Doo is, is you explain it. Especially if you're going to downplay the mystery part, explain it at the end a little bit. Throw hmm. some explanation out there if you're not going to have them actually solve the mystery like they would in, a, you know, in actual Scooby-Doo, which is fair enough. Then at least explain it because that's part of what Scooby Doo is. It's all uh, to me, part of the a huge part of, of what makes Scooby Doo fun is the explanation at the end of, okay, now you get to see the writers and the creators' thought process of, of this thing, and it 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 makes the characters smart and it makes them who they are, and especially if you're going to downplay the whole detective aspect, you got to explain it at the end. And the fact that they didn't explain it, I'm just like, no, you failed. But I don't know what Jim thinks because he's been silent. Yeah, I was about to say, which is fair enough. What does Jim think? Um, personally, I liked it a lot. I mean, I kind of get what you're <coughs> saying, but it was one of those things where, you know, it, 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 it was just supposed to be funny. It wasn't intended to make sense. The explanation was just that, okay, you know, they, they wanted to find Norley Reed's treasure because they were his great, 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 great grandkids, maybe. That's really all the explanation. That's really all the explanation that was needed. And you know, Stu got caught, so his sister thought she was going to pick up where he left off, and she was going to get the treasure, which is fair enough. Which I have to say, when she and when she, every time the sister said that of, "We're his great 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 grandkids, maybe," I was like, "Oh my god, that's so funny!" I don't know why the way she delivered the line of "maybe," it's mm -hmm. like that's funny as fuck. <laughs> and it's not even like they know they're grandkids. They're just like, "Oh fuck it, we might be, so why not?" <laughs> yeah. That's really all the explanation that I needed. I got it. Their motivation is, hey, um, we're the new generation of fucking pirates. Do that shit. Yes. Yeah. So no, yeah which, which, may which, be the new generation of pirates. Yeah, they don't even know. Which is fair enough, and that's great motivation for why they want the treasure. Again, my my complaint was for the, for the second character, for the sister, because the brother didn't really need motivation because it was there. But um, for why she even thought it necessary to get herself involved with Scooby-Doo gang when they were really no threat. The brother, fair enough, they set that up nicely. They set that one up beautifully of why he had to because they had the map. He wanted the map back, so he had to make his presence known. Fair enough. That's basic Scooby-Doo motivation. I can get behind that. But they gave her zero motivation for involving herself with them. There was, based on what they presented in the story, there was no reason for her to get involved. And that's, Revenge like I said, brother. one thing they always explain at the end. One thing Velma always explains is why did the villain feel the need 
to involve us? Why did they, you know, feel the need to scare us and try to, you know, make us fuck off? Be Every Scooby Doo has a because they got her because they got her brother taken away by the cops and probably thrown in a juvie for a little while, and she was trying to carry on the family legacy of proving that she was better than her brother that she could bring home the treasure. That's called. Cool. Yeah, so wouldn't that not have helped her getting her brother out of the way? I think she. I think she wanted to prove she was better than her brother, like Jim mentioned. Because also, if she gets involved with the Scooby Gang, she can prove she's better than her brother by being the one to actually beat the Scooby Gang. Yep. And also, they have to involve the Scooby Gang because that's the name of the title, Scooby. <laughs> Boom. Which is fair enough, and any of these explanations are plausible. Again, my complaint is the fact that they didn't explain it. That's my complaint. I don't yeah, care which, what the possible explanation which, is. They didn't explain it, so it's just all speculation at this point. Which, again, we mentioned we got your point. We were just saying our point on why we liked it. Yes, it's, 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 it's called the producer's... Making the assumption that the viewer has half a brain and can piece this together the way we have done in about five minutes. Yeah. Pretty much. You know, kids kids today, despite how a lot of the crimes have for kids today, thinks that they're really dumb, stupid people. They are actually not. They can figure this crap out. So. And that's fine, but Scooby-Doo was never meant to be that. And like I said, I don't know, it just took away from the experience for me, the fact that, that Velma didn't explain it. And I'm like, so you give her basically Sherlock Holmes level intellect, and she doesn't explain why they're after you. Okay. But she, but she did. She pointed out that okay, we know it's Shirley because she had this, 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 and this, and you know she was trying to get the treasure back, and they got involved in the treasure hunt because they found they followed the first map, which led to that X, and ended up finding her. I don't think this means but anything. But again, I maintain that they didn't find her. She laid a trap for them, so she she. For purposes unknown, there's only speculation and inferences, but for purposes unknown, she involved herself with them because she laid a trap for them. She didn't have to be there with the pirate ship to wait for Shaggy and Scooby to stand on the X to get launched into the pirate ship. She could have just gone to get the treasure, but no, she made a choice to get involved with them. And my point is they gave Velma this Sherlock-level intellect. They even flaunted it with, uh, this, is how I f this is how I knew it was her, but then... They take away the basic Velma level intellect of from any, like the, any and every Scooby Doo ever made of this is why the she need to get involved with us. Well, that's every not true. Scooby Doo does that. That's not true at all. What do you mean? Have you seen Shaggy and Scooby get a clue? Have you seen every animated film? Have you seen all the live action films? Yes. She doesn't do it in the live action films. Boom. She doesn't do it in a Shaggy and Scooby get a clue. She's not even around for the 13 ghosts. Yeah. Although to the film, she doesn't know, Velma's not always the one to do that. She does that now and again, but that's more of the assumption and, like I mentioned earlier, nostalgia goggles. Because if you go back and watch the original Scooby-Doo, she doesn't do that all the time. She really doesn't. Well, she does it when it's necessary, because most of a lot of the villains, it's painfully obvious why they got involved, because, let's face it, the kids are there, and they're about to stop him from committing the crime. To, to me, this one was less obvious to the point that it needed that explanation, because from where I sat, there was no reason for her to get involved with them. There was zero reason. I she, got, she was about to get what she wanted without any interference from them. It's not like they were going to stop her from getting it, because they didn't even know where the treasure was, and she obviously did. It's like, what's the fucking point? Which I this would need an explanation. I would make the case where you say she doesn't if it's painfully obvious. Me, Jim, and Pew all found it painfully obvious that it was because of her brother. I think this mm. point does not need to be discussed any further. No, that's not. Usually, stuff like that is explained in Scooby Doo when it's when it's something as contrived as, or not contrived, but when it's something that's like you know. Oh, she's doing it for this other character that we introduced earlier in the story. They usually explain something like that, but if it's something like, you know, this guy's trying to commit a crime, and through our actions we would have stopped said crime and got him sent to jail, that really doesn't need to explain. That pretty much explains itself of, well, I have to get them out of the way, otherwise I can't complete my mission. That that's usually the motivation for most of the out-and-out -out criminals in Scooby-Doo. It's the ones that aren't out and out criminals, the ones that have other, you know ulterior motives that aren't necessarily doing it for the crime, they're doing it for other stuff. That's usually the one that has to be explained because if you look at Scooby-Doo 
in those instances. The the reasoning behind why they have to, why that particular that particular villain has to involve themselves with Scooby Doo and the gang, the Mystery Inc. gang, isn't as painfully obvious because their motivation for why they're doing the supposed crime isn't as obvious because they're not technically a criminal. Just like in this one, she's not technically a criminal. She's just trying to get something back that she feels is hers. Maybe. And the, and okay, yes, there's a very tenuous connection of okay. She's the sister of the person they caught before. That still doesn't explain why she felt the need to get involved with them. And yeah. usually in those instances, that's when Velma, because, and that's in my opinion why Scooby Doo is such a smart property, it's such a smart show and movies most of the time, well, at least the ones that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of them. And yes, you're right, I haven't seen them all, but it's because they will have the characters ask the questions that the audience themselves would be asking. They'll have like Fred or Shaggy at the end be like. Okay, I get why they, why you know this person felt the need to commit this crime or whatever. Why the hell did they get involved with us? And film was like, oh well, that's because of this. And it's like, okay, well you've explained it, excellent, and that makes sense. Okay, fair enough. But this one they didn't explain it, and there I, I didn't feel there was anything out and out, you know, in your face that this is why she felt she had to get involved with them. I never felt she ever had to get involved with them. Which, like I said, it's fair enough. We've all agreed mm -hmm. to disagree because yeah. we all thought it was well, obvious. You, you, you didn't, which is fair enough. And I know Pew's getting a little annoyed with debating the same topic. And I think we're just going around in circles at this point. Yeah, so I think we should move on. Did, did you have anything else to add, Jim? Um, no, I think that was about it. Um, I um. Like I said, when Shaggy we ended up on the ship, I thought it was because none of you needed the map, but maybe I was wrong. But anyway. Um, Did anybody think, think um, Velma's blinking was weird? Because that's the only thing that, um, that was weird for me, because the puppets. But, I mean, it wasn't took me out of it. It was just weird, but it was also kind of funny. Like, it wasn't weird, like, I don't think I should be there. It was just weird, like, hey, look at that, and then it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll admit, there's loads of stuff where they just had fun with the puppets and the dialogue. Like I said, I loved the line of, maybe... Which was funny, and I loved Daphne with line up for inspection, and all that yeah. she was going to places like, well, thank you, yeah. and I'm like, that I don't know why that's just funny. No, it, it wouldn't be as funny for a cartoon, but for a puppet, they seem to know which aspects work mm. to make a puppet funny, and I'm like, that just mm. works. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, I originally thought that too, Jim, until I realized, wait, the map led to the. Wrap. So the map really doesn't lead anywhere. Why would Gnarly Beard lead the map? Okay, this is ceasing to make sense. But yeah, I'll go with it. It'll, it'll be explained because it's Scooby Doo. They do that kind of thing. Yeah, I would make the case that could be a trap, or then again, it might not be. So what? That was set up by Gnarly Beard in hopes that there would be some sort of vessel out in the water at the time that anyone would come to that place? That's kind of stretching. Unless that's where he parks his boat. Yeah, he might have, he might have had the ship anchored there, and surely might have, surely might have just found the stupid thing, and maybe because I believe she I believe she turned them into slave labor, so maybe she needed them to get the ship to where they was going to the island. That's a possibility too. Although yeah. it's not like they fixed the ship; they just cleaned it. It's like okay. Yeah, which, for, for, for all you know, they were rigging the yard arms, and everything off screen. You don't know. True. Yeah, we uh, which I will say, personally, apparently, apparently according to apparently uh, apparently according to you, a little girl is incapable of lifting or doing any manual labor. So how she would have run that ship by herself, I don't know. That's not what I said. That's what Mole said. No, Mole said that she would be incapable of lifting a giant chest filled with gold bricks, which adult men can't really lift. Big chest filled with gold bricks. It's called gravity and weight. <laughs> I personally am a grown man. I couldn't lift a chest filled with gold bricks. And also angle and distribution. Because things lower than you are often harder to lift. Whereas if you're lifting it higher, it's easier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fair but I, yeah. Which is also why if you watched any of the WCW matches, whenever they did like the title in a pole match thing, they kept falling out the box. Almost like it was too heavy to be sustained by hanging there. Damn WCW Vinso booking, but still. Nah. Mm. Is it time for our final verdicts? I believe so. I think we've gone around long enough on this. All right. Which order did you want to go in, Almighty oh, Host? It matters not. Whoever would like to go first can. I am not picky. 
which I will point out, James was the original Birdman before that new film that just hit the cinema ripped him off. Ah. Just saying. Ah. ah. If I'd actually seen Birdman, I probably would have got that joke. It's the fact that James is a phoenix. And it's like a bird man. That's all you need to know. You just need to know the word bird man and phoenix. Yeah, fair enough. enough. I thought you were referencing. Thing, uh, I thought you were referencing something about the character himself. Fair no, enough. no, just the fact that it's a bird and I'm a phoenix. <laughs> Pretty fair enough. joke. I don't think anybody has actually seen that movie. So. Well, you couldn't I, say that he's half of I that. Have, I, I will do. I will. I haven't seen it yet, but I do have it set to be delivered. Yeah, I have the DVD sitting right over my desk there. I hope to watch it at some point before the end of the weekend. I do want to see that movie. I heard it's quite good. <laughs> Which, Indeed. for the final verdicts, then I'll say this was a budget release. Yes. Hmm. It was like five quid in the shops over here, which that's normally saved for like 30-minute specials like Shrek Holiday Bells mm-hmm. and stuff yes. like that. It should, be noted that oh, it should be noted that over here it was a... It was. Uh, no, I'm going to say it was a, a direct dvd release uh, exclusively in Walmart. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's also worth noting, if you buy it on the store from PSN, like I purchased it today, I haven't seen the second one yet, but I will do, you also get Scooby-Doo and the Spooky Games for free. Oh, and nice. I, would say, I, I would just say quickly, I did love that, and I thought that was a much better Scooby-Doo than the actual feature. And it's shorter. It's like 25 minutes or 20 minutes, like an episode long. It was really good. Mm-hmm. It should also be noted if you had the actual DVD that was sold at Walmart, which I believe this is, it did come with two bonus cartoons on it. Uh, the it Backstage did. Rage episode of the original Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? and the Robopub episode of <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Nice. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say it did. I know that my nephew's got the DVD because I got, like, I got him for Christmas. He watched it with me. It was awesome. And now I've purchased it digitally on PlayStation myself earlier today. Which, yeah, like I said, a budget release. I feel we can't be as harsh on this as we are on like a full-priced title that comes out on DVD because it's like a third of the price. At least for me, it was. And I'm like, okay. So weighing up all of that stuff, plus the bonuses it gives you on PlayStation Plus, plus, in my opinion, this film is just fun. It knew it was fun. It knew it wasn't going to be serious. It just loved everything it was doing. I'd say heavily, check this film out. Buy this film. You will not be disappointed. This film is it's fun. It's great. It's cheap. And you get a bonus, depending on where you buy it or what version. You get different bonuses. Totally check it out. It's worth it. And if you really feel like only, but you would like to quickly stream it, I will note that um, via the uh, newly added uh, movie viewing abilities on YouTube, it's uh, type it in the YouTube. Watch for three ninety nine. Yeah, or well, if you want, to, or if you want to stream it, you can just buy it on the PS Four. That too. Not everybody has yeah, or Amazon or any other streaming service. I would assume it's probably on Netflix as well. Netflix doesn't mm, matter Netflix about that. Netflix, yeah. at least here, doesn't do purchases. They um still on Netflix and rent it though. Uh, it's at, yeah, your, but, uh, at your library. Rent, get yeah. it at your library. That's yeah, I said that too. That's where yeah, that's where Stacy and I got to get it at your local library. It's free. Yeah, so I was saying I don't know how Netflix works over there entirely, but mm-hmm. I know over here Netflix is only the streaming section, so you can't yeah. rent or subscribe. You can only get the stuff that you would get with your streaming package. There is no rentals. Although yeah. Amazon does let you do that. Yeah, yeah, over I, here I, there's two. Over here there's two Netflix options. You can pay eight dollars a month for rentals, uh, for DVDs through the mail. Eight dollars a month for the streaming, or sixteen dollars a month for both. Or you can pay nine dollars ninety nine a month, and you can have no Scooby Doo stuff, but you can get to see such riveting past promos as Great Cali and Umarka going one on one on the microphone. Check it out today. <laughs> I would probably face one if they actually had that on there. <laughs> I would love as, it. As, as like a WWE original special or something. I'd be like, wow. Did you don't remember that Monday Night Raw? No. That was on one of the old Raws where Kali and Umaga actually spoke. And no joke, the dialogue consisted of... I mean, I believe... I can't be fully accurate, but I believe it was then followed by a damn. <laughs> and that was it. And I'm like, that, that's genius. They didn't even bother with subtitles. <laughs> I mean, subtitles nice. would have made that awesome. 
Yeah. And what up? What would have made it more awesome is if they had is if they had somebody who was uh, is if these two guys are back here and they're talking to each other, and they had somebody who was a known smartass like Jericho or Edge Christian just holding up subtitle cards as they were talking, yeah. like they were writing them as they were talking and then holding them up. Yeah, that would have been awesome as well. But uh, how about one of yours, final verdicts? All right. Well, mine. Uh, since I got this for free, so I like, can't be can't be that. Was at the library and um, came on one desk. Boom, easy, pop it in. It was fun. I loved it. It just kind of blew my mind. And you just want to accept everything about it. I love the whole freaking rockets and Scooby Snacks because that really felt like you know I can see that happening. I can see like like I was home was using like video game logic in my head. You know, like it was like a power up or something because like I played the SNES um, Scooby Snacks and that would always help you out. And it, that just seemed that just felt right. When he like transforms it, when he eats the scuba snacks, you know, because like I, fuck your scuba snacks, you got your own brand, you deserve it, and something awesome should happen. I, I love you how you ever seen a pup named Scooby Doo? Then I have. Yeah, I love I, I love how... Scooby Doo logic, which I loved. I was like, yes, they took the transformation. Like he fully like transformed, like legitimately like he did like, transform. He just didn't like make a Scooby like outline by ch- changing his shape. He was like, boom, magic, transform into a ball. You're not like Scooby trying to make the shape of a ball. You are a ball. Like, yeah, when, when I was like, I loved how they looked. Too. Like, that ball was Scooby's face and the tongue out as it rolled. It was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. It was just, like, wonderful fun. You could be 5, you could be 25, and you'd still like it. I would give this, like, a 9 out of 10 because it was just amazing. Fair enough. Like I, like I said, they did most of it right. They got the characters right. They got the voice actors back, which again was awesome. And I'm, I'm, I was actually a little surprised they did it, but I guess it's for the anniversary, so why not? Um, they got Frank Welker to come back as, as Scooby and Fred. I'm like, come on, wow. But um, and what then of you, course, what do you, what do you mean, come back? Well, come to this production as. It's a Scooby Doo production. He is in every Scooby Doo production as Frank as Fred and Scooby. That's not new. That's expected. Highly. Well, was this an official Scooby production or was it one that was licensed by like Hanna Barbera and the Scooby company? Warner Brothers Productions. Okay. Yeah, there, was, there was another production company they were affiliated with that I think handled the puppetry creation and puppetry portion, but it wasn't Warner Brothers production. Although, as I keep mentioning, I believe he. I'm not entirely sure. Jim will be able to look it up. I don't think he was the voice of Scooby in Shaggy and Scooby Get a Clue because none of the voices matched with that. Like Shaggy sounded fucking weird. Scooby sounded weird. It looked like ass, and it just was ass. God, uh, I, I can't well, that, clue. that was kind of like lobotomy, so for a Scooby series, so. Well, I need to check that one out then, just because it sounds terrible. And it's like, okay, no, no, well, it, I should, it, at least. Well, are, you, are you familiar with the premise of that show? You can tell me later. Let me finish. Um, right. But, you know, the, the production values were great. The, the sets were awesome. The puppets looked great. The puppeteering was spot on. Like I said, the plot was actually a good plot. It was a good Scooby Doo plot. Um, you know, the villains were were pretty cool. Like I said, my only complaint was just that that huge gap in not not necessarily gap in logic, but that the the fact that like I said, to me the, that one part just didn't feel explained to me and it, it took me out of the the Scooby Doo experience. And it's not like I was looking for some like masterpiece or anything, I was looking for it to be serious. I knew it was gonna be dumb fun because it's a puppet show. So I was just looking for it to be fun, but even in that, and uh, maybe Pew? like, yep. Pew, can you mute your microphone? We keep getting sounds and voices coming for it. Weird. Okay. Um. It was like a noise. I don't know what it was, but it kept cutting Marcus off. If there's a oh, voice, I think there's somebody else in this apartment with me, and I need to look out. <laughs> well, fair enough. It was just like that. It was just like a not type. It was like a weird noise. I don't know if it was a voice, and I sounded like an echoey TV or something. Okay, that's weird. I just got freaked out for a second. And like, oh, I better be home alone because nobody what? else should be here. I think I figured it out. What? You're not using your headset again. When no. I speak, I'm coming through your end. When Marcus okay. was speaking, he kept coming through your end. All right. Sorry. It's echoing. I can hear it. Sorry. Yeah. But. Yeah, like I said, I guess. Perfect, 
ending to the Scooby Doo review, and I just solved a mystery. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Very true, and I, and I will also say for the record, no, in that show, Scooby Doo was actually voiced by Frank Welker. According okay, to Wikipedia, he, anyway. Okay, he did a weird voice, but you know, back to my yeah, that, that show was ass. Anyway. But continue. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess just to me, part of the Scooby experience is that explanation. So to me and for me, this when the ending came around, I, I was like, that's it. And I was like, uh, okay. I don't know, just to me, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be because I heard so much good stuff about it. Like, it was going to be awesome, and it's like that was kind of a letdown at the end, and especially with the fact that it was pretty decent up until that point. Like I was like, okay, this is not bad. Like I said, everything else was actually pretty spot on. The voices were great. The, the, you know, the characters, the other characters that weren't the main Scooby cast actually felt like Scooby-Doo characters, like they would fit within the world. So I'm like, okay, that's that's awesome. They have great characters. Mm. And then they do that, and I'm just like, okay, this has ceased feeling like Scooby-Doo. However, I would say go check it out because you might like it because, you know, not everybody is going to be looking at it the same way, and not everybody's going to be looking for the same things. And as Mole pointed out, he saw it with like his nephew, and his nephew loved it, and he likes it. And apparently, you know, and you know, Mole and and Stacy and Jim all like it, so you may like it too. Give it a try. And uh, with the digital version that you you get, if you get the digital version, you get that really awesome. Basically, it's almost like an, it's a mini movie. It's, it's episode length. It's about twenty minutes. That Scooby Doo and the Scary Games. That is awesome. That 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 blew my mind. I was like, yes, that is fucking amazing. No and spoilers. It, no, I'm not gonna spoil it. But it's it is more of the more modern Scooby Doo. Like if you look at the the artwork for that, the, the animation, it's more the current animation, which helps. I'm not saying everything needs to be that style of animation because, like I said, I love the pup name Scooby Doo, which is completely not that style of animation. Um. But yeah, it was it was more of the the more serious Scooby Doo, but it had the elements of fun. It just it felt like Scooby Doo to me, and I loved it. So uh, it's worth it for that alone. But um, yeah, the the puppet thing was fun, and the music was decent. It's catchy, which is another hallmark of Scooby Doo. It always has catchy music. So just despite the fact that I thought the song didn't quite fit as a chase song for Scooby Doo, it was catchy, so it worked. It, it fulfilled its purpose, um, and it wasn't a bad song. It was actually a good song. I like the song itself. So yeah, check it out. Um, I'd probably give this. I'd probably give it about a seven out of ten. Over to Jim. Ah, uh, fair enough. Overall, I said I really like the production. Um, I I certainly think it's it's worth it's worth a watch. Go uh go buy yourself a rental the DVD. It's inexpensive in either case, or get it for free at your library, whatever. But give it a watch. It's a fun production. You can watch it with the whole family, or if you're just yourself, and you want to watch it. It's fun. If you're if you're a big fan of a pup named Scooby Doo like I was, definitely worth a watch. Great mm -hmm. fun. A lot of stuff brought in from that series. Um, it's just a silly little adventure. It's 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 a, it's 45 minutes. It, it's you know a little something to do for 45 minutes. It's fun, and it comes with the two bonus episodes, which are always fun to watch too. Old school. Unless you get the digital um, one, which only comes with the one, and it's a different one too. Right. TV. Well, I, I like the fact that away bonuses. Yes. So now I kind of want the DVD so I can see the two bonus episodes. But yeah. Well, it's it's the it's the, it's you know the the backstage rage, which is you might remember the episode in which the the uh, the gang ends up uncovering a smuggling operation. Uh, our counterfeiting operation being run at a circus, and they have oh, to run to the yeah. owner, who's a puppet master. Yes, uh, I do remember that one. Yeah, they did there. And the Robo Pump one is just—it's a fake dog, so I guess that's kind of like a puppet. I guess. I, I, would, I would make Fair. the case your one, like my one, Marcus, mm. actually has better bonus special stuff than like my nephews or Jim's and stuff, because instead of just episodes you've already seen, it's a brand new special. <laughs> True, very true. And this it's about the true. London 2012 Olympics, which everything's better when it comes from England. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah although I've kind of, I find it kind of interesting they don't call it the Olympics, they call it like the World Games or something like that. Mm -hmm. I call it the Olympics! It's the Olympics, damn it! <laughs> it's probably so people didn't get confused with the Laugh Olympics. Ah. Perhaps. God, I remember the Laugh Olympics. <laughs> Uh. 
All right. Yeah. Well, I, I love that special. Every, and everything was explained. Anyway, go ahead, Jim. Indeed. But uh, yeah, overall, give this a watch. It's a lot of fun. I would give it eight, eight and a half, maybe a nine. I mean, it's just a really great special. It's fun to watch. Yes, maybe that's a few inconsistencies, but all you really need to know is it's a lot of fun. It's just a little Scooby mystery. Enjoy the characters. Enjoy the jokes. Enjoy the comedy. Enjoy the puppets. They're awesome. Maximum funnage. Pretty much. <laughs> so there you go. God, am I the only one when Stacy said that instantly flashed to, like, Shaggy covered in the Carnage symbiote? <laughs> I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Oh, I'm the only one who thought Maximum Carnage when she said that. Okay, fair yep. enough. Shaggy never got the symbiote. <clears throat> Though he did totally die in The Clone Wars. Hmm. No one, I'm guessing no one here gets that. Which is fair enough. No. In the Samurai Jack looking Clone Wars, which was on Cartoon yeah. Network, one of the yeah. Jedi that runs out towards Dark Grid, runs off towards General Grievous, Looks exactly like and is voiced very similarly to Shaggy from Scooby Doo because it's on Cartoon Network. It's like a throwaway joke. So Shaggy nice. gets butchered by General Grievous. Nice. Okay then. And that hasn't been erased from continuity. Woo. No. Yet. Yet. We're not even going to get into Disney and how they're. Fucking everything up. But no, anyway, that, take us on for two. That won't because they said Clone Wars won't because they can still sell Clone Wars merchandise and yep. the TV shows and stuff, so yay. Yep. Clone Wars. Indeed. Alrighty, well, uh, thank you three for joining me. It's a lot of fun to talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will uh, take us out here. We'll see you next time. Join us for some more of our uh, upcoming reviews here on the. X found uh, a little earlier tonight. If you're a wrestling fan, we're going to be doing our uh, usual Saturday night X marks. So uh, hang around for that. And later this month, top five Scooby Doo animated films Ooh. of all time, yes. hosted by, I believe, the only member of the X Pound to successfully look like Waluigi 24 7. I don't know exactly who that's supposed to be. Jim! Okay. He looks like Waluigi. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I don't know about 24-7. Have you ever shaved, Jim? <laughs> if he shaved, he would cease to be the mustache guy. Yeah. Which is well, t-shirt uh, available right now of I'm a mustache guy. Indeed. Also, <laughs> I, also, I make the point that I don't think I own any purple clothing. But other than that. Challenge accepted. I just need your address. Yeah. <laughs> And the, sad, the funny thing is, Mole would do it too. Oh, he would. I'll get, I'll get off Pew later. <laughs> he needs a box from Waluigi Close. He'd be like, Mole. Probably could. <laughs> uh, ah. But no, the five Scooby Doo animated films, I thought this would be the perfect review to mention them. It was. It was. Alrighty. Well, yeah. thank you for joining me. I'm James Phoenix. We'll see you next time, folks, here on the X Pound. Peace. Yeah.